In religion, paradise is a place of exceptional happiness and delight. Paradisiacal notions are often laden with pastoral imagery, and may be cosmogonical or eschatological or both, often compared to the miseries of human civilization. In paradise, there is only peace, prosperity, and happiness. Paradise is a place of contentment, a land of luxury and fulfillment. Paradise is often described as a higher place, the holiest place, in contrast to this world, or underworlds such as hell. In eschatological contexts, paradise is imagined as an abode of the virtuous dead. In Christian and Islamic understanding, heaven is a paradisiacal relief. In old Egyptian beliefs, the otherworld is Aaru, the reed fields of ideal hunting and fishing grounds where the dead lived after judgment. For the Celts, it was the fortunate Isle of Magmel. For the classical Greeks, the Elysian fields was a paradisiacal land of plenty where the heroic and righteous dead hoped to spend eternity. The Vedic Indians held that the physical body was destroyed by fire but recreated and reunited in the third heaven in a state of bliss. In the Zoroastrian Avesta, the best existence and the house of song are places of the righteous dead. On the other hand, in cosmological contexts paradise describes the world before it was tainted by evil. The concept is a theme in art and literature, particularly of the pre-Enlightenment era, a well-known representative of which is John Milton's Paradise Lost. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> The word, paradise, entered English from the French parody, inherited from the Latin paradisus, from Greek paradisos, paradisos from an old Iranian asterisk paradata, walled enclosure. By the 6th, 5th century BCE, the old Iranian word had been adopted as Assyrian pardesu, domain. It subsequently came to indicate the expansive walled gardens of the first Persian Empire. The term eventually appeared in Greek as paradesos, park for animals, in the anabasis of the early 4th century BCE Athenian Xenophon. Aramaic pardesa similarly reflects, royal park. Hebrew pardes pardes, orchard appears thrice in the Tanakh, in the Song of Solomon Song of Songs 413, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 5, and Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 8. In those contexts it could be interpreted as an orchard or a fruit garden. In the Septuagint 3rd minus 1 stone centuries BCE, Greek paradesos paradesos was used to translate both Hebrew prards pardes and Hebrew gen gon, garden. E.g., Genesis chapter 2 verse 8, Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 13, it is from this usage that the use of paradise to refer to the Garden of Eden derives. The same usage also appears in Arabic and in the Quran as for das fredos. The word's etymology is ultimately derived from a pi root asterisk dig, to stick and set up. It is reflected in Avestan as pyridesa. The literal meaning of this Eastern Old Iranian language word is walled enclosure, from pyri around, cognate with Greek peri, English peri of identical meaning, and dis to make form a wall, build, cognate with Greek tychos wall. The word is not attested in other Old Iranian languages, though hypothetical roots in these languages may be reconstructed, for example, as in Old Persian asterisk paradata. The idea of a walled enclosure was not preserved in most Iranian usage, and generally came to refer to a plantation or other cultivated area, not necessarily walled. For example, the old Iranian word survives as parties in New Persian as well as its derivative palas or jalis, which denotes a vegetable patch. Biblical Hebrew Bible The word pardes does not appear before the post-exilic period post-538 BCE, it occurs in the Song of Songs 413, Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 5, and Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 8, in each case meaning park or garden. The original Persian meaning of the word, where it describes to the royal parks of Cyrus the Great by Xenophon in Anabasis. Later in Second Temple era Judaism, paradise came to be associated with the Garden of Eden and prophecies of restoration of Eden, and transferred to heaven. The Septuagint uses the word around 30 times, both of Eden, Gen, 2-7 etc. and of Eden restored Ezek, 28-13, 36-35 etc. 
In the Apocalypse of Moses, Adam and Eve are expelled from Paradise instead of Eden after having been tricked by the serpent. Later after the death of Adam, the Archangel Michael carries the body of Adam to be buried in Paradise, which is in the third heaven. Topic. New Testament The New Testament use and understanding of Paradise parallels that of contemporary Judaism. The word is used three times in the New Testament writings. Luke chapter 23 verse 43 by Jesus on the cross, in response to the thief's request that Jesus remember him when he came in his kingdom. 2 Cor, 12-4 in Paul's description of a man's description of a third heaven paradise, which may in fact be a vision Paul himself saw. Rev, 2-7 in a reference to the Gen, 2-8 paradise and the tree of life. Topic. Judaism In Rabbinical Judaism, the word pardes recurs, but less often in the Second Temple context of Eden or restored Eden. A well-known reference is in the Pardes story, where the word may allude to mystic philosophy. The Zohar gives the word a mystical interpretation, and associates it with the four kinds of biblical exegesis, peshat literal meaning, remas allusion, darash anagogical, and sod mystic. The initial letters of those four words then form Perdes P A road E S, which was in turn felt to represent the fourfold interpretation of the Torah, in which sod, the mystical interpretation, ranks highest. Topic: Christianity. In the second century AD, Irenaeus distinguished paradise from heaven. In Against Heresies, he wrote that only those deemed worthy would inherit a home in heaven, while others would enjoy paradise, and the rest live in the restored Jerusalem, which was mostly a ruin after the Jewish-Roman wars, but was rebuilt beginning with Constantine the Great in the fourth century. Origen likewise distinguished paradise from heaven, describing paradise as the earthly school for souls of the righteous dead, preparing them for their ascent through the celestial spheres to heaven. Many early Christians identified Abraham's bosom with paradise, where the souls of the righteous go until the resurrection. Others were inconsistent in their identification of paradise, such as Saint Augustine, whose views varied. In Luke chapter 23, verse 43, Jesus has a conversation with one of those crucified with him, who asks, "Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom." Quote dot. Jesus answers him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This has often been interpreted to mean that on that same day the thief and Jesus would enter the intermediate resting place of the dead who were waiting for the resurrection. Divergent views on paradise, and when one enters it, may have been responsible for a punctuation difference in Luke. For example, the two early Syriac versions translate Luke chapter 23 verse 43 differently. The Cortonian Gospels read, Today I tell you that you will be with me in paradise. Whereas the Sinaitic Palimpsest reads, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Quote dot. Likewise the two earliest Greek codices with punctuation disagree. Codex Vaticanus has a pause mark a single dot on the baseline in the original ink equidistant between today and the following word with no later corrections and no dot before. Today whereas Codex Alexandrinus has the today in paradise reading. In addition, an adverb of time is never used in the nearly 100 other places in the Gospels where Jesus uses the phrase, Truly I say to you, in Christian art, Fra Angelico's Last Judgment painting shows paradise on its left side. There is a tree of life and another tree and a circle dance of liberated souls. In the middle is a hole. In Muslim art it similarly indicates the presence of the prophet or divine beings. It visually says, those here cannot be depicted. Topic. Jehovah's Witnesses Jehovah's Witnesses believe, from their interpretation of the book of Genesis, that God's original purpose was, and is, to have the earth filled with the offspring of Adam and Eve as caretakers of a global paradise. However, Adam and Eve rebelled against God's sovereignty and were banished from the Garden of Eden, driven out of paradise into toil and misery. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that disobedient and wicked people will be destroyed by Christ at Armageddon and those obedient to Christ will live eternally in a restored earthly paradise. 
Joining the survivors will be the resurrected righteous and unrighteous people who died prior to Armageddon. The latter are brought back because they paid for their sins by their death and or because they lacked opportunity to learn of Jehovah's requirements before dying. These will be judged on the basis of their post-resurrection obedience to instructions revealed in new scrolls. They believe that resurrection of the dead to paradise earth is made possible by Christ's blood and the ransom sacrifice. This provision does not apply to those whom Christ as judge deems to have sinned against God's Holy Spirit. One of Jesus' statements before he died were the words to a man hanging alongside him, You will be with me in paradise. Luke chapter 23 verse 43 The New World Translation places a comma after the word today, dividing it into two separate phrases. I tell you today. And. You will be with me in paradise. Quote dot. This differs from standard translations of this verse as, I tell you today you will be with me in paradise. Based on scriptures such as Matthew chapter 12 verse 40, 27 to 63, Mark chapter 8 verse 31 and 931, witnesses believe Jesus' expectation that he would be bodily resurrected after three days precluded his being in paradise on the same day that he died. Topic. Mormonism. In Latter-day Saint theology, paradise usually refers to the spirit world, the place where spirits dwell following death and awaiting the resurrection. In that context, paradise is the state of the righteous after death. In contrast, the wicked and those who have not yet learned the gospel of Jesus Christ await the resurrection in spirit prison. After the universal resurrection, all persons will be assigned to a particular kingdom or degree of glory. This may also be termed paradise. Islam In the Quran, heaven is denoted as Jannah garden, with the highest level being called Firdaus, i.e. paradise. It is used instead of heaven to describe the ultimate pleasurable place after death, accessible by those who pray, donate to charity, read the Quran, believe in, God, the angels, his revealed books, his prophets and messengers, the day of judgment and the afterlife, and follow God's will in their life. Heaven in Islam is used to describe skies in the literal sense and metaphorically to refer to the universe. In Islam, the bounties and beauty of heaven are immense, so much so that they are beyond the abilities of mankind's worldly mind to comprehend. There are eight doors of Jannah. These are eight grades of Jannah. 1. Janital Meva 2. Darul Makam 3. Darul Salam 4. Darul Qud 5. Janet ul Adan 6. Janet ul Naim 7. Janet ul Kasif 8. Janet ul Firdus Janet ul Mava is in the lowest, Janet ul Adan is the middle, and Janet ul Firdus is the highest. Imam Bukhari has also recorded the tradition in which the Prophet said, When you ask from Allah, ask him for al Firdaus, for it is the middle of paradise and it is the highest place, and from it the rivers of paradise flow. Bukhari, Ahmad, Baihaqi. In this tradition, it is evident that al Firdaus is the highest place in paradise, yet, it is stated that it is in the middle. While giving an explanation of this description of al Firdaus, the great scholar, Ibn Hibban states, al Firdaus being in the middle of paradise means that with respect to the width and breadth of paradise, al Firdaus is in the middle. And with respect to being the highest place in paradise, it refers to it being on a height. This explanation is in agreement to the explanation which has been given by Abu Huraira, R. A., who said that al Firdaus is a mountain in paradise from which the rivers flow. Tafsir al Qurtabi, Vol. 12, pg. 100. The Quran also gave a warning that not all Muslims or even the believers will assuredly be permitted to enter Jannah except those who had struggled in the name of God and tested from God's trials as faced by the messengers of God or ancient prophets. Or do you think that you will enter Jannah while such trial has not yet come to you as came to those who passed on before you? They were touched by poverty and hardship and were shaken until even their messenger and those who believed with him said, When is the help of Allah? Unquestionably, the help of Allah is near. Quran, Chapter 2 Al-Baqarah, Ayah 214 Sahih International Topic. See also Dilmun Eridu El Dorado Fiddler's Green Golden Age Galoka Nirvana 
Paradise Garden Shangri-La Valhalla References External links Etymology of Paradise Balashan.com Etymology Online, Etymonline.com <laughs>